Welcome to the Predictive Playbook. This is NFL week number nine already. It seems like the season's just flying by. We are rebounding well as a team from the uh, debacle we had two weeks ago on the show. But like I've said, there's 18 weeks in the NFL. There's 18 holes in golf. And even the best professionals on the PGA Tour have that bogey somewhere. And we just happen to have it right then on that week. We never know when it's going to happen. And if you learn anything from these shows, these things will happen to the very best of the best. And there's no way to avoid it. But the point is, put your vision on the longer term. We're hitting in the low 60s against the number. That doesn't include the money line sprinkles that we recommend doing, such as the sprinkle on the Jets last week and the, and the Patriots and, and a lot of dogs that we do give out. Uh, so we're trying to be just 100% transparent with the actual ATS record. Uh, but just know that those sprinkles do add up, and that's why we recommend them. So anyway, enough about the past. Let's look at the the future here on the Week 9 NFL card. We're going to start out with Dr. Chuck. 4.05 p.m. on CBS TV, the Chargers, who were upset by those Patriots last week, are going to go to Lincoln Financial Field in the city of brotherly love to take on the Philadelphia Eagles, who are finding themselves 3-5, and five, coming off a tremendous, surprising win last week, where they actually were able to run the ball. And it was against Detroit, though. The Chargers come into this game a minus 1.5 point road favorite with a total of 50 points. Take it away, Dr. Chuck, and tell us where the best bet is for this game. Well, just in uh, your little synopsis there, you brought up several of the aspects that I'm looking at here. You called it an upset. Uh, that's not what you said on the show. You called that very correctly, that you thought the Patriots would cover and win that game, as they did. Uh, hasn't been a good couple weeks for the Chargers. But uh, in addition, Jesse and I both pretty bullish on the Lions last week, thinking that maybe if they're not going to go 0-16, this is a good spot for them, get the Eagles at home. I power rated the Eagles pretty close to the Lions heading to last week. But uh, because of that performance, there's a couple things that I love. I love fading a team off of just an absolute mauling of a team, especially if it was on the road and they're coming back home. Uh, this line opened, I think, two or two and a half. It's down to one, and you can get this at a pretty solid money line price as well. And it might even keep dropping because money seems to be – uh, heading in the Eagles direction, but what you mentioned, this game is at four o'clock. So what's interesting about that is when we talk about West coast versus East coast travel situations and things like that, you know, West coast teams traveling to the East coast, trying to get their body clock starting a game at 10 AM is not ideal. Uh, this is a situation where it's not ideal for the Eagles to wait around and play in their park all the way till four, which is an advantage for the chargers. The chargers, flew out two weeks ago to play a one o'clock game, 10 o'clock their time and got hammered by the Ravens in a spread that was pretty tight. So we not only get a spread that isn't as much as I have it rated, we get a body clock situation that it actually favors the road team and a team that's a home dog inside home field advantage is O and seven straight up O and seven ATS the last seven games. That's amazing. And I'm, I'm sorry here. Uh, and uh, on top of that, I also get just self-serving. This is one of my overplays on uh, season wins. And I love getting to back, back a team that I already have a play on the over in the season and get a win during the season, in, in season. So uh, the Chargers, my, money line, minus one. I would play it up to minus three, honestly, which is where I had it. So any of those are going to be good. Awesome breakdown, Chuck. And uh, there's been a lot of studies done about what you were saying. With the um, the time of day uh, that is peak athletic activity, peak athletic yeah. performance, and you're spot on with that. And uh, I like to call the West Coast team coming east and playing at four o'clock quite a bit. That's a very important factor in that game. But also, the one thing I forgot to mention: it doesn't happen that often. And right. it's seven and one the last eight. Yeah, and it's, that's great stuff. Let's move on to Jesse Scholl here. We're going to take a look at a 1 o'clock game. Two East Coast teams in this matchup. We have the New England Patriots 4-4. Four and four. Finally, at, at 500, they could easily be 7-1, and one, guys. They you know failed to score in a red zone 
and uh, missed the field goal against the Bucks. They had a Damian Harris red zone fumble that cost them in the season opener, and they had a three and out possession in the overtime loss to the Dallas Cowboys. So they might be a team playing a lot better than uh, an even four and four record. They're three and zero away. Panthers are also four and four. It's a pivotal game for both teams. New England finds themselves a four point favorite with an over under of forty one points. Take it away, Jesse, and tell us where the best bet is in this matchup. Well, John, as you said, uh, the Patriots have been playing quite well, and they could be a lot better than their record would uh, lead us to believe. And uh, the Panthers are struggling uh, since the injury to Christian McCaffrey. They've, uh, they've looked terrible. Even last week, they managed to pick up a win over Atlanta. But Sam Darnold also suffered a concussion in that game. He's questionable to play this week. His play hasn't been that great anyways. Uh, in the game against Atlanta, he only threw for 129 yards on 13 of 24 passing. He's got more picks than he does touchdowns this year. And uh, New England looks pretty good coming in as a road favorite here. Uh, Chuba Hubbard uh, trying to pick up the slack for McCaffrey. He's doing an okay job. He's averaging 3.6 yards per carry, which is well below the league average. I just don't see how Carolina is going to get enough offense here against a very stingy New England defense. The Panthers have struggled against the spread at home. They're 4 11 and 1 against the spread in their last 16 home games. So I'm going to take New England. I like it quite a bit. I had New England last week, and uh, they came through in flying colors. And I think they're a team that's going to certainly be a playoff contender uh, down the stretch here in the second half of the season. So we're going to move on to uh, my pick here. And my pick is involving the Cleveland Browns and the Cincinnati Bengals. And this game is set to start at 1 p.m. can be seen on CBS TV at it can be viewed live at Paul Brown Stadium in Cincinnati, Ohio. Burrow continues to just outperform my expectations, my model's expectations, yet Cincinnati is only a two-and-a-half point home favorite, over under 46-and-a-half points. So the Bengals here, uh, and I did have the Jets last week on a different show, and you know they did what they did, and it re- just reminded me of so many other upset situations that we've seen in in years past and for whatever reason maybe the Bengals were looking ahead to this this divisional showdown uh maybe they were still hung over from the big win at Baltimore where they destroyed the the Ravens uh but this is a team that is much better than the Browns and the Browns are struggling um and it's not because of their quarterback issue it, it, they're struggling on both sides of the ball uh they they rank 21st in offensive yards per point in the league Cincinnati ranks 5th Cincinnati also ranks fifth in defensive yards per point, and Cleveland a distant 26th at 13.6, which means the lower the number on defensive yards per point means it requires fewer yards for the opponent to put one point on the scoreboard. And since his number is 17.8, Cleveland's is 13.6. That's you know monumental. That's like from here to Pluto, um, or at least Saturn. You know, it is, it's two different qualities of defensive performance, and Cleveland is not a, a good team right now in my eyes. So, um, you know, Zach Taylor for the Bengals, I really like how he's coaching, and he's going to have that team focused because the reigning schedule for them includes four games against the AFC North. Then they also have dates with the Raiders, Chargers, and Chiefs. they got to win this game and hope that that Jets uh, miscue – it's not going to be the reason they don't make the playoffs, but I really believe in this team a lot. Uh, they did allow 511 yards to the league's worst offense last week. I mean, the stats are just mind-blowing. But the good news is that the Bengals are still moving the ball, and Joe Burrow, uh, he was 21 of 34, 259, three touchdowns last week. He's third in the NFL in touchdowns with 20, fifth with 2,215 passing yards. And... From my predictive model, uh, the Bengals are expected or predicted to to average eight or more yards per pass attempt. In home games, when they have achieved this or exceeded it, they're 7-1 against the spread. And against this defense that I think is Swiss cheese, 
I wouldn't be surprised if, if uh, Burroughs' numbers approach closer to 10 than they do approaching the 8. Also, Bengals are 25-9 and nine against the spread, coming off a game in which their defense allowed 300 or more passing yards. All said and done, I'm on Cincinnati, minus the points. And if it goes down to minus 1.5, I would recommend playing the money line at that point. So that's about all we have for uh, today. Um, thank you, Jesse, for your pick. Thank you, Dr. Chuck. Thank you both always for being such uh, committed to these shows. We love doing them. People that are watching this show, feel free to leave a comment, ask questions. We'll do our best to get back to everybody. The idea is to share knowledge and also grow the subscriber list. So make sure you ring the bell and hit the thumbs up if you like the show. We appreciate it very much. So on behalf of Jesse, Dr. Chuck, and myself, may all the wins be yours. Thanks again for watching.